A long time ago, in a country far away, many children fell asleep into an inexplicably deep slumber and could not be awoken. Legend has it that a demon will snatch kids and attempt to keep them sleeping in a dream world inside his castle in order to gain power from their fear. And now, in your kingdom, children have also gone asleep as well. You will be playing as one of these kids stuck inside of the demon's castle in attempts to escape by searching through all of the rooms. And if you can find the wake-up tile and aroused from slumber, you will win the game. However, if you get locked up in the dream state and you are secured by chains, you will lose the game, remain slumbering forever, and the demon will feed on your fear. This is the game Chainsomnia by Jap Anime Games. It plays a two to four players and it takes roughly about 45 minutes to an hour to play. And in the game, you'll gather a character with a unique ability and you'll be utilizing actions based on how many chains you have in your character board in order to try and escape the castle. Utilize secret spots in each of the different castle locations and rooms. Avoid nightmares and different cards that are going to affect you in different ways. And be prepared for the demon to make his own actions on his turn where he will try and keep you locked in as as well. Will you escape or will you be stuck in the dream world forever? Find out in Chainsomnia, I'll show you below. Here we have the game Chainsomnia set up for four players because four is the best number in my opinion for the game. Every single player is going to get a player board, two chains that you'll place in the utmost areas of their board, and then you're also going to get an AP marker for action points that you'll place in the number based on the number of the lowest um, area that does not have a chain. So in this case, that would be three for this player here. So place that AP marker on the three. You'll also give somebody a start player marker. Everybody will get a character summary or player reference, which will tell you where your items and your events go. And then you're going to have your chains and dice set aside somewhere nicely. Everybody else will get the same. Shuffle the item deck here and then place it within reach of all players. And then you're going to coordinate the event deck. It's explaining the rules, how it works, but certain cards are going to go in certain stacks. You're going to make this uh, a set of like seven stacks, I believe, or five stacks, and you'll place these malice cards within the deck here, uh, which will formulate a more challenging experience as you progress throughout the labyrinth. Uh, you're also going to go ahead and we'll just set this on top here, uh, place the chain Somnia tile, the main one of the game, uh, in the middle of the room, as well as all of your characters on that space. And then you're going to go ahead and make sure that you take out the wake up tile and place it aside. Based on the mode you're playing, you'll be utilizing specific rooms in this deck here. You'll take out a certain number of rooms in the normal mode. Uh, you'll shuffle these guys up and you'll place the wake up tile on the bottom and that will formulate your room deck. But you can play the easy mode as well. Set aside all of the rest of your character boards. You won't be utilizing them if you're not playing with them. And of course you have this envelope here. This is going to be an end of game use only. So you can set it aside near all the players uh, as well as of course the rooms that are extra. You won't need those either. And this should look like your setup for a four player game of Chain Somnia. In Chain Somnia, it works in rounds. Everybody's going to take their actions, and after everybody takes their actions, the demon will go, and then you will start once again by passing the player marker and having that player take their actions, and then of course everybody else will, and the demon player will go, and you'll rinse and repeat until one of two things mainly happens. Either A, you get through the entire room stack, you find the wake up area, you go into there and you succeed, or the event deck runs out and you lose. I believe the other way you can lose too is if all of your characters get locked up, which is probably a little less likely to happen. Uh, in the game, you have a certain number of actions and uh, they are all here on your character action summary card. And of course, how many of those you can take is up to the specific character based on its AP. And each of them will have a certain uh, value in order to utilize those actions. The, there are a certain number of them. There's You can explore a new room. You can move to an adjacent room, search a secret spot, use an item, give an item, give or take chains from your character to another, or you can use your specific skill provided it has a cost to it. I'll explain them all rather quickly. The first one is explore a new room. If you start and your character has AP in this room here, you can simply take a room and discover it. And like I had before, you would place this just like that adjacent to one of the doors, make sure it has legal placement, and then you have discovered a room. Whenever you discover a room, you'll take an event card or event cards if there are 
are certain rules and regulations that will require you to, and you'll place it down, you'll read it. Uh, if it is an ominous or auspicious event, it'll go over here and you'll perform whatever that specific event says. It might be beneficial and it might not be. Uh, these are used later for the end of game endings. Uh, if instead of getting one of these guys here, which are very simple, you'll get something like a bad dream, that's going to go on the location that you have um, placed on the board. And these guys need to be vanquished in order for anybody to go into that specific room. It'll tell you what you need to do in order to vanquish it. Spending an AP, rolling nine or more on wisdom, and then uh, the character also has to have the requirement of having three or less wisdom as a stat. So in this case, I've revealed the room, flipped this over, and placed a bad dream from the event deck, and that would be one action. Uh, the next thing that you can do is you can move to an adjacent room. Now, in this case here, I won't be able to do that. So instead, if I want, I can attempt to defeat this trial. Now, I do have less wisdom than, um, than, it, than it needs in order to succeed. So that's two, which means I need to um, be able to spin an AP and roll nine or more. So I would take these two die. I would roll them. Uh, that's five, six, seven, eight, plus my wisdom of two, which is 10, which is higher than nine, which means I win. This gets removed. This goes down. Uh, one other thing to note too is whenever you draw a card, you'll look at the top left, and if there's a chain symbol on it, you're going to take that chain and place it on your character board, going from the top to the bottom area, which can change the amount of AP you have on your next turn, or even on this one if you get locked up. Uh, another thing you can do is now, of course, like I said, move to an adjacent room. So in this case, I could just do that. Whenever I do that, that would cost me one singular action. Uh, let's just say I got four more AP for some reason. In general, that would be the end of my actions and my turn would be over. But just for example purposes, I'll just give myself more. Um, another thing you can do is search a secret spot. There are secret spots located on the different uh, locations in the dungeon. In order to successfully gain them, I will need to roll two dice plus my stat and any cards that I might have and get higher than that number or equivalent. And then I'll get whatever benefit it is. This one here says I get plus one item and this one says I get plus one item. Uh, my higher stat that is strength, which is five, plus my two die that I roll, which will net me six, seven, eight. Not enough. However, if I did roll high enough, which in this case I would, if I rolled that, I would gain an item. And items go down here with a max of two in your slot. Another thing you can do is you can um, use an item. <laughs> if you have an item and it says that you can use it, you can simply spend it. Some items are going to be equipped forever and get, let you utilize AP in some way, and others are disposable and will get removed from the game when you play them, and you just simply put them in a discard pile if that's how they work. Uh, you can give an item, so if you're adjacent or in the same room as, room as another player, you can give an item or use an item on a player, and of course you can also give and take chains from players who are in adjacent rooms or in the same room as you. So for instance, I'm adjacent and or in the same room with this character with any other player. If I wanted to, I can spend an action I can move this little chain to somebody else, which could give me a benefit of some type, like more actions on my next turn, or preventing me from being locked up. And then finally, I can use a skill. This character says I can spend an AP to move any character uh, to a room with another that another character occupies. Uh, Ryan can also move characters to and from a room that has a bad dream card on it. So I could spend an action point and move this character in here. It's a nice little way of moving characters around the board. And that's pretty much all the actions in the game. Uh, like I said, once he runs out of actions in the game, uh, then he would pass turn. The next player would get a chance to go, thusly gathering more rooms, flipping over more events, attempting to move around, find secret spots, and search through the dungeon that is Chainsomnia. After everybody takes their turn, the bad guy is going to reveal a card and do what it says. If it's a bad dream, it'll go on the room of the player that has the start token, and if it's anything else, it'll just it'll, it'll just go into the specific area that that character states it goes into, and you'll perform it. Eventually, as you go through this event deck, you're going to meet some dangerous cards. Uh, for instance, you might meet, um, let's see here, a Malice card. You'll put this card in your item area and it'll affect you in negatively in some way. Or, for instance, maybe you'll get a Shriek. When Shrieks come out, they'll stay out forever, and whenever somebody has to draw an event card from the event deck, you'll have to draw one card plus the number of Shrieks out on the field, making this event deck run out quicker as you go throughout the game, and if this deck runs out, you guys will lose. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. Demons are draw one event plus one for every Shriek, as well as whenever you place out a room, move around the castle, find as many rooms as possible, eventually get to that wonderful wake up tile and escape and that will secure you the win for the game. If you do successfully win, you'll open this up, you'll determine how well you did, and then you can choose to play again if you would like. 
Chainsomnia is an action management game where you're attempting to utilize the character of your choosing in order to try and escape the demon's castle. Note that because you have a certain number of chains on your character board at any given point in time, that will result in a certain amount of actions being given as well. Sometimes the more chains you have, the more actions, or the less chains, the more actions. It really just depends on the character and their abilities. You'll also note too, as you search through the different castle buildings and walls, you'll start noticing bad dreams that will block certain areas off and you'll have to clear those spaces and if you don't do it quick enough you're going to be in trouble because the game will end and you'll be stuck inside the demon's castle your main objective is to go through as many building rooms as possible find the little locations that will give you the ability to remove chains and gain beneficial items in the game and unique little circumstantial things that will help as you attempt to discover everything you can before you find that wake up tile beware though of course the demon is out to get you and will be utilizing an action or actions based on how far the game has come along in order to create events that are negative for you. Some of these events are actually not so bad and can help you in certain ways, but for the most part, they're going to cause you to waste time. This game fun functions similar to games like Pandemic, games like Forbidden Island, and games like uh, Mission Catastrophe, in which you only have a certain number of actions and turns in order to successfully get through the game before it's too late, before the demon keeps you locked in forever. Uh, the artwork for the game is excellent. If you like a lot of Jap anime games artwork, you're going to enjoy this game as well. It has kind of an anime theme to it, uh, definitely um, more kid-friendly uh, in nature. Uh, of course, it has a little bit of a darker tone, because it involves a demon and slumbering kids and being stuck in this specific uh, nightmare realm, but it's fairly lighthearted as far as the artwork goes and what it looks like. The story is a lot more darker than the game itself. Um, the different tiles on the game provide a different unique experience each and every time because the tiles will always come out in a different set, and of course you never know what's going to spawn, how you're going to build the castle, and when you're going to need to find that wake-up tile. It'll pop up eventually, and there's different modes in the game that you can choose to play and utilize as you go through. The quality of the game is high as well. All of the cards are nice, sturdy cards. I think this is a prototype version of the game, but for what is here, it's really, really good. And even if it wasn't, I would consider this game to be pretty much done. It has very nice thick tiles, which are easy to uh, visualize. You can see what is presented on those tiles, the secret locations, how they are supposed to be utilized, and when the best time to utilize them is. Uh, different characters in the game are going to each come up with, of course, their own unique player board, which is also high quality as well. And like I said before, I really, really like the artwork. All the different standees are beautiful. It really works well for a high quality gaming experience. So let's talk about gameplay now. First of all, in this game, based on the character you play will determine how you play the game. Some characters really like getting chains on them. The problem though is when you get too many chains, you're gonna be locked out of your turn, you won't be able to utilize actions, and you're going to instantly stop. Or if it becomes your turn and you have chains on your board, you also won't get to do anything. And being able to uh, be stuck in the dream world and not be able to take actions is a pain in the butt. And you need to utilize your friend's actions to keep your chains uh, in the area that you'd like them to be in. Like I said, because some of the characters are a little more advanced than others, and in the rule book it will tell you what characters uh, function in what ways and how you want to utilize them, uh, you're going to need to try and determine how many chains you kind of want to keep at any point in time. It's a management type system that will give you more actions or less, less actions based on the type of chains or how many chains you have on your board. You start with a certain number, but you can remove them, you can trade them with other players, and you can gain more of them based on event cards, abilities, and of course the actions on the different locations locations in the labyrinth or in the castle. Uh, another thing to note too is based on how you build the castle will determine the difficulty of the game as well. You need to try and kind of keep everything as secured and tight as possible. However, the doors kind of prevent you from being able to do that precisely, just similar to games like Betrayal in the House on the Hill, in which you're going to have to kind of present your actions with certain rules uh, based on how you can place the tiles down and where they go, kind of go. Uh, the game is going to get more challenging as well as you proceed, because as you keep going throughout this event deck, you're going to run into specific cards that are going to present a larger challenge. There's these cards called Shriek Cards. Normally, whenever you go into a new room or attempt to go into a new room, Room, you'll draw an event card, which could be a bad dream, which could prevent you from going into that room. When you have Shriek cards that are already out, whenever you draw one of these events, you'll draw more. And that includes with the demon as well. And when that happens, a lot of bad stuff can start in ensuing as well. You need to be prepared for that. And the only way to be prepared is by utilizing your actions well, utilizing your character ability, and of course, utilizing your item cards. There's some items that are remarkably good, and some that are not so great as well. Sometimes there's going to be event rooms that will require you to use 
utilize items in order to get past certain bad dreams or per get, allow you to gain items from the specific secret areas in the specific location that you're in. Uh, rolling is part of the luck in the game as well. You're going to be attempting to utilize your stats along with the die, along with any items you have, to then be able to gather enough points in order to secure that secret location that you need. And if you can do that, you'll be successful in this game. Now, of course, there's always going to be a bit of luck in games that involve rolling die, so you might end up getting two ones, and even with a reroll, that might still happen. But it's about mitigating luck, and this game does that fairly well. Because, for the most part, you're going to be able to choose what you think is more likely for you to be successful at. And obviously, with dice, if you've ever played craps before, you know that the number seven is the most likely to roll. So if your difficulty is seven or lower, you have a very good chance of being successful. Whereas if it's 12 or higher, you're going to be in trouble even if you have a good amount of stats on your character board. And you can utilize those stats, and I specifically urge you to do so, based on whatever you have the most of. The game presents a lot of unique choices, specific actions to take, and the best times in which to take those actions, and you have to be prepared to do so. And if you're not, you're going to not do very well at this game. It is a fairly challenging game. It does present itself as a challenging game like Pandemic would be, uh, probably a little harder than Forbidden Island, uh, and very similar in style and complexity to those games, with some unique little twists and turns, utilizing the chains on the character board and utilizing your specific abilities, and every character has their own unique stats that will benefit them, similar like to Betrayal. If you like games that are kind of like Betrayal, that have a cooperative aspect similar to games like Pandemic, and you want something with a little bit of a darker theme, but some really cute artwork, then I would definitely suggest you take a look at Chain Somnia by Jap Anime Games. The game is currently up on Kickstarter, and you can go ahead and pick it up in the link down below in the description. For us, had a lot of fun playing. It was a mixed bag of emotions. Uh, one person was kind of irritated over the fact that they kind of got stuck with all the chains, and they couldn't seem to free themselves, and other players weren't helping them enough. A um, person like me had a lot of fun with this game because I was utilizing my character abilities really well, and I was trying to be as mitigative as possible. We ended up almost getting to the end on the first couple games, and we finally started figuring out how it works. There's also a ni nice unique surprise that I like as well inside this little envelope here. At the end of the game, you'll open it up, and that will determine your ending for the game based on how well you do, and as you progressively get better, you can kind of go through those cards, and you'll find the actual ending for yourself, and uh, there's a true ending, there's kind of like mediocre endings, and then there's like failures that you can gather as well, and then you can come and simply play it again. It's quick, it's simple, it's really easy to understand. The bad dreams, I guess the, the cards in the event deck are probably the most complex aspect of the game, but overall, if you enjoy action management games with a little bit of luck and a little bit of danger with a timing mechanism, this is definitely something I would suggest you take a look at down below. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Chainsomnia by Jap Anime Games. If you're interested, like I said, there's a link down below in the description. Also, don't forget, hit that subscribe button and of course that bell notification button so you can get reminded of all of our content. We create videos every week, Monday to Friday, and sometimes even on the weekends. You can also go ahead and check out my wife's game, Moonshell, a mermaid game. It's a puzzle game in which you're trying to gather seashells to form patterns from open and closed objectives while you utilizing your mermaids and mermaid meeples, or mermeeples, uh, to secure certain specific strategies and, of course, abilities in order to get those patterns that you need. There's a bunch of unique little twists and turns to the game that plays in a family-oriented style game, but when the kids go to bed, you can start bringing out all the big guns and the more strategic components to make the game a little bit more thinky and a little bit more puzzly. You can also go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more available to you, link down below. And, of course, our live stream every Every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. PST. You can see us play games just like this one and just like Moonshell every week. Join the community. It's on YouTube, it's on Twitch, and it's on Facebook. And see us play some fun games that are on Kickstarter games that you probably can't get a hold of, so you can kind of determine if it's something that you'd like or not. Also, check out our Patreon, and of course, go ahead and check out our Discord. We do fun little things there every week. I try and make something you know interesting, and I'd really greatly appreciate your support, either by just joining the Discord or supporting us on Patreon. Thank you you guys so much and as always i look forward to venturing into the dream world and escaping with you next time